The U.S. is losing the region to China without a fight. China is using everything from finance to fishing to technology. How is the U.S. now hoping to counter this? America has a growing problem close to home, China's increasing influence in Latin America. Over the last 20 years, China's global expansion has been unprecedented. And more recently, it has developed much greater ties with many Latin American countries, including Venezuela and Brazil. China's state-owned businesses have become significant investors in the region's industries. They have pumped vast sums of cash into the energy, space and infrastructure industries. And in the space of just two decades, China has overtaken America as South America's largest trading partner. More worrying for America, though, is China's military and diplomatic presence in the region. America and its allies are concerned that Xi Jinping is cultivating relationships in the region to pursue his global expansion ambitions and create more authoritarian regimes. But what can America do to reignite its presence in the region, or is this just another sign that America isn't the force that it once was, and China now has the upper hand on the world geopolitical stage? So how has China developed these Latin American relations so quickly? From 2000, only 2% 2 of South America's exports ended up in China. Over the next 10 years, South American exports to China grew on average by 30% per year, or around $180 billion per year. As of 2022, China is now importing over $450 billion worth of goods from Latin America each year, and this is estimated to increase to over $700 billion per year by 2035. China relies on South America for its copper, petroleum, oil, and a whole host of other raw materials to further its industrial operations. China, in return, offers South America higher priced technological equipment at a lower price than it can get elsewhere. China has entered into free trade agreements with Chile, Costa Rica and Peru, and another 20 South American countries have signed on to China's Belt and Road Initiative. This initiative is a global infrastructure development strategy adopted by the Chinese government in 2013 to invest in 150 countries and many international organizations. This initiative is considered the centerpiece of Xi Jinping's global expansion plans. The Chinese overseas foreign direct investment and loans also play a significant role in the region. China offers low-rate loans to Latin American countries for cheaper raw materials to run its industrial output. America and other countries have raised concerns over the loans offered by China, suggesting that these are debt traps. America has also publicly stated that it fears South America's reliance on Chinese money could reduce labor and environmental standards in the region. So we know how China has expanded their influence in the region, but the question is why? And the answer to this is probably threefold. One, it wants to expand its sphere of influence through soft power and build political goodwill with Latin American governments to present itself as an alternative, cheaper partner than America or Europe. Secondly, China continues to try and isolate Taiwan, and it does this on the global stage by refusing to enter partnerships with any countries that recognize Taiwan as an independent sovereign nation. As a result, many South American countries have distanced themselves from Taiwan. And three, China laid out in its 2015 Defense Strategy White Paper the importance of security and military cooperation within the region. And it achieves these aims by selling South American countries arms and weapons. It also conducts many military exchanges and military training programs within the region. So we know how and why China is increasing its influence in South America. The final question is what America is doing about it. And the problem for America is that it is spread very thin on the ground. Much of its attention has shifted towards Ukraine, the Middle East and the Asia Pacific. And as a consequence, it is losing its alliances in the South American region. 
Donald Trump probably didn't help the situation in the region by taking his well-known hardline approach of imposing sanctions on those who didn't comply with America's interests. And this invariably pushed many South American countries further towards China. Joe Biden has been more proactive towards South America by introducing the Build Back Better World to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative. He has also tried to develop support for Taiwan in the region by increasing the number of vaccine donations. Many argue within America that the Biden administration is not doing nearly enough to counter the Chinese influence in South America. Biden has to realize that his Chinese counterparts will play by their own rules and turn a blind eye to the region's corruption and human rights concerns as long as they achieve their aims. Biden is absolutely right though to put greater pressure on the region and insist on greater transparency and democracy. Unfortunately, until Biden starts brandishing some carrots instead of some big sticks, Latin America will continue forming ties with China. The US needs much greater commitments to trade and investment with its neighbors. If it fails, it will likely lose influence in its own neighborhood to Beijing. And quickly before you go, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this one up here because I'm sure you'll find it equally interesting. And I'll see you in the next one.